Hi, I'm Amy Stoneham. I'm the editor of Hidden Wires and I'm joined today by Peter Gibb, the business development uh, of Custom Install for Lembrook. Hi, Peter. Hi, Amy. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're talking about NAD receivers today, the T758 uh, B3I receiver uh, and the T778 receiver. Um, yeah. Both of them are premium high performance receivers that focus on great sound quality. How does amplification play into that? Uh, so obviously any deer, uh, an amplifier manufacturer for, for 50 years, we celebrate the 50th anniversary this year. So we've been uh, playing a big part in the amplifier industry for, for a long, long time. And it's, it's what the business is founded on. Um, we came from obviously a two channel hi-fi background and uh, we've been kind of pioneering amplifier technology for yeah, for five decades. So we, we obviously believe that the amplification can play a big part in the overall sound quality as part of the system. Um, it's important to deliver not just power, but good quality power with low distortion, um, a low noise floor and um, control of the speaker. Um, so, you know, we, we pride ourselves in being able to develop good quality amplification. Uh, the T758 specifically is still using our, our Class AB technology, uh, mm -hmm. which is what, you know, what the brand was built on was Class AB amplifiers. Um, but we've been pioneering both digital and Class D amplifier technology for the last 15 or 20 years, really. Um, and we've been one of the first brands to really take that into to high-end audio. Um, and so the T778 uses our newer hybrid digital platform, which is based on Class D amplifier technology. Um, and that delivers, again, great power, but with really low distortion um, and mm. a really low noise floor. But it's also got a good current output and the damping factor's high, so it gives you great control of the speaker at the end of the system as well. So, um, okay. so yeah, amplifier uh, plays a big part in the overall, yeah. overall system design for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I noticed that it's only um, an 85 watt mm. times nine channels. Um, some might think that is a little bit low on power compared to other receivers on the market. Yep. Do you want to explain why, why is that? Yeah, there's a, there's a good reason for it. It's, it's a common misconception because of the way we declare our power ratings that, that if, if you just look at an NED uh, spec sheet, you'll often look at it and think, oh, that's 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 not so high compared to the way other brands uh, declare their power. Mm. Um, but um, we, we very much believe in declaring very conservative power measurements. So the way we rate our amplifier is slightly different. Uh, to other manufacturers and we, we actually call it full disclosure power because we believe in giving real world power ratings rather than um, you know power ratings that look really good on the spec sheet but then when you actually set the system up it, it, it slightly under delivers on, on the power that's coming through but um, so yeah we, we tend to measure our receivers so on, a, on that T778 for example which is nine channels of amplification when we measure our power, we measure it with all nine channels running simultaneously. Right. We measure it with a full frequency response uh, right the way through the measurement. We, me we measure it into a, a proper uh, live speaker load, which is, again, a more demanding way to measure the amplifier. So, um, And we also declare our, put our uh, total harmonic distortion at the rated power, uh, which is okay. quite important. And another important factor is we do always declare our continuous power ratings. Um, mm. rather than peak power, uh, which, which can be achieved for, for short bursts of, of louder audio. So what you find with other manufacturers is that a lot of brands will still measure, they'll declare the power rating with only two channels running, or they'll declare it with, they'll measure it with a one kilohertz test frequency, uh, or right. uh, they might declare their, their distortion at one watt. And what all of that does is it basically makes the power rating look a lot higher. Um, yeah. So uh, it, it's great for the spec sheet, but then when you're actually putting it in a system, if you're trying to meet a specific uh, sound pressure level, uh, what it means is sometimes the amplifier is not quite delivering what you thought it might on paper. So we very yeah. much believe in, in under promising and over delivering rather than, rather than the other way around. And, but you know what we always say is use your ears ultimately. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. But don't don't rule out an NED because of what it says on on paper. But um, because most people, when they plug an NED in, that is their first response: is this isn't going to have enough power. And in yeah. the end, it almost always, uh, well, but pretty much always surpasses their expectations. So yeah. Okay. 
Great. Um, now, these receivers, they have a modular design construction. Can you tell us how this future proofs the receivers and what has that modular design construction allowed you to add um, to the receivers? Yeah, so I think when NED entered the, the sort of AV receiver channel, which has gone back close to 20 years now, I think that we realised at the time that um, for a brand like us, which is a bit more specialist and high end, to, to, to refresh your AV receiver range every couple of years or every year um, wasn't going to be practical. But display technologies and, and immersive audio formats are constantly moving forward and developing. But again, for our, for our uh, typical end user, if you're, if you're spending, you know, uh, that budget on a, on a premium amplifier because you mm. want that, that that extra quality. You don't want to be replacing it every year or two anyway because the HDMI connectivity has changed or it doesn't support Dolby Atmos or what have you. So we, we, we decided at that time we would need a way of being able to keep our amplifiers up to date without completely refreshing the range all the time. So um, right. modular design construction or MDC as we call it is a way that we can keep the connectivity and the processing of the amplifier up to date and it's basically like PCI slots on a computer where you can just take the, take one module out and replace it with another. Okay. Um, and, and what that means is, you know, with the T758 V3i, for example, um, has been on the market for, for around 10 years now. And, you know, oh, wow. we've been able to add 4K uh, HDMI. We've been able to add uh, network connectivity. We've been able to add direct room correction. Um, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, uh, and of course Blue Os, which is which is quite a big a big feature for us. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really kept that up to date. That's why we have the V3i designation. So every time we launch a new um, MDC module, that becomes the factory fit option. But right. all the ones in the market can be upgraded using the MDC, um, and it, it's good for servicing as well. It means that. Yeah. If anything goes wrong with that part of the receiver, the connectivity of the processing, it's very simple to swap out the card. And it can be done by a dealer on site. It uh, doesn't need to go back to a service center. So it's, it's a really nice feature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Um, you mentioned BlueOS there. How is that incorporated into the receivers and what benefits does that, that bring the devices? Yeah, so as, as I said, well, for, for those that don't know, so, so Lenbrook, uh, who are the, oh. the, the parent company of NED, uh, developed BlueOS, which is a multi-room multi-source streaming platform it's the software side of it and we also uh you know the, the sister brand of NED is Blue Sound which is a more consumer multi-room brand but Blue Os mm. is the software that uh that, that operates the, the the streaming aspect of it and brings all your music services and allows you to group players together and everything and um, we've been able to implement Blue Os onto receivers as I say through the power of MDC Mm. Uh, actually, Blue Os the uh, the module sits on the the video card, uh, the current okay. video, the, the receivers, um, and what it means is from from a streaming platform, it gives you access to AirPlay to Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. Uh, you can it, it can just sit in any Blue Os network with Blue Sound players, with NED players, um, uh, and be grouped and, and streamed with all of those. We can use the same control integration drivers uh, to control the system. Uh, so yes. Um, you know, as a, as a music company to be able to stream your music to your AV receivers, obviously. Great yeah. Things. Cool. Um, you also mentioned direct room correction. You've added that. How does that benefit users of the receivers? Yeah, so we added direct to receivers quite a few years ago now. I think it's mm. gone back four or five years ago we implemented direct. Um, and um, I mean, any system, it doesn't matter how good your amplifier is, how good your speakers are, the room's always going to have a massive impact on the, the, the overall uh, results. So, you, and, you know, you can't always uh, do all of the acoustic treatment you would like in a room. Uh, so a, a good room correction software is really important. We, we think Dirac's the best one on the market. Um, it, it deals with all the, uh, the impulse response corrections, the frequency response corrections, the time alignment of the system. Um, and uh, it really does a great job of managing all the lower end frequencies, which in turn um, really um, open up the system, increase the clarity in the sound staging and give you a, a fantastic end result. It, it really is it, it's a superb uh, yeah. piece of software that, that, that sits on our receivers and it's very easy to calibrate. So, yeah, it's good. Great. Really nice feature. Um, finally, the T778 has a really cool feature as well um, that's quite unique to receivers. Uh, can you tell us about the full colour 
touch panel on the front and uh, what that's used for. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a it's a really sort of cool and uh, feature that we, we you know we probably don't talk about enough when we talk about the main features of the receiver. But having a colour touchscreen kind of serves two functions. So um, if you've got your receiver on display in a media room and you're listening mm. to music or what have you, it, it can either display your album art and what you're listening to, or you can have little uh, digital VU meters which are really really nice looking. Um, mm. uh, really set it off uh, if it's in the room with you, but probably more relevant to the CI guys if it's not in the room and it's sitting in a rack um, and it's, you know, the, the displays in, a, in another in another room, what it means is you can actually go into the uh, the colour touchscreen and then the full on-screen uh, setup menu is available to you through the touchscreen so you can completely configure the receiver from the touchscreen, uh, okay. which is just really, really cool and convenient. Uh, it saves you messing around with, with with a remote and you know scrolling through letters when you're when you're naming your sources and things. It's, it's a very yeah. feature. So and we've now introduced a web UI as well. So um, okay, through the IP address, the, the, there's there's an HTTP link to just uh, to, to a web UI, so you can set both the T758 and the 778 up uh, from a, from a web browser. So that's cool as well. Mm, okay. Excellent. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us and telling us a little bit more about those uh, today. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Amy.